Welcome to the Glam Cam. I'm Rachel Barenbaum, author of A Bend in the Stars. And today we're here on Bastille Day to Vive la Révolution with Professor Brianne Faz, who has written this amazing book, compiled an incredible collection of manifestos called Burn It Down. This book rocked my summer, and it is very appropriate that we're talking about it today, Bastille Day. Professor, tell us what is Burn It Down about? So this is a collection of 500 pages of women's anger and rants and all sorts of new revolutionary visions of the world that span all the way back from late 19th century all the way to today. So you'll, you'll hear from women across a ton of subjects. Um, and anger, I mean, ang it really showcases the power of women's anger, that anger is not to be messed with when it comes to um, women creating revolutionary visions for the future. The word manifesto is very romantic, and uh, you say that it combines this romantic quality of dreams with the crushing power of a Mack truck bulldozing established traditions. Can you talk a little bit about that? Manifestos are meant to be impatient, impolite, and absolutely will not wait for change. So they are documents that are supposed to be about someone's vision about something new, but really not in the way we're used to hearing that. There's no tempered claims. There's no like wait and see. There's no, we need to inch towards progress. It's all about wanting change now and wanting a whole new world now. Um, and they're, they're really meant to be, you know, jolts to the system and shocks to your system. This is some jagged edges of feminism in this book. So and this, this is not the, you know, the super like easy to swallow, you know, palatable versions. These are, these are really, you know, very bracing and intense documents that it's nothing like you've ever read before, most likely about, especially within feminism. So most of the essays in here are clustered around, they were published around the 60s and 70s, uh, and then they lead up till today. Can you talk about how the language or ideas have evolved? Definitely. I mean, you know, the ones today have just exploded into 50,000 different directions, it seems, whereas the ones in the 60s and 70s are really focused a lot on things like um, domestic labor and thinking about sex and thinking about uh, issues of the body. A revolution is a revolution, you know, we're still fighting the same struggles in some ways, just with different frameworks and different contexts, you know. Same shit, different year. Isn't that the t-shirt? Yeah. <laughs> so you open with an excerpt from the Scum Manifesto, and I just want to read this. You say, uh, life being at its best an utter bore and no aspect of society being at all relevant to women, there remains to civic-minded, responsible, thrill-seeking females uh, only to overthrow the government, eliminate the money system, institute complete automation, and destroy the male sex. What an opening! How did you choose that? Is that is the opening of openings. And that really gives you a flavor of what manifestos are like. But yeah, <laughs> it's a great line, isn't it? It is. But I really wanted to talk about this idea of a thrill-seeking female as opposed to equality-seeking female. Well, I mean, it's sort of like the difference between a traditional kind of, you know, movie where women are pining for a man and trying to end up getting married and have children versus the vision presented in something like Broad City, where people are much more about, you know, having a good time and having this, you know, their female friendships being valued and trying to have, you know, kind of imagine a new world. So there's a lot of levity in our conversation and even in the names of some of these manifestos, but it's actually a serious topic. What do you want readers to take away from this book, this collection? Well, I mean, it's, it's serious, but in the same way that anger is serious, that it can be transformative, right? And so a lot of times we can laugh and we can fight at the same time. And that's really important. And that's what this collection is also showing you. So manifestos in themselves have an inherent contradiction because they are belligerent, because they are manifestos, but they also are standing up to belligerents. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, it's also, it's important that this book is showcasing feminist voices too, because women in particular have been stripped away of being able to be you know belligerent too and so this is it, it really feels jarring and startling to sort of read people writing in this way um but i i do think there's a line between bullying per se and really trying to think about um you know tr like pushing forward a vision of 
this is like, it has to happen now and we're not gonna wait. We need this work to remind us that the things we're fighting about now also have this long genealogy and this long history and that it helps us to, to reframe what we're worried about and the things that we're struggling with in relation to our own history as well. So I think we need that, but also sometimes this book just feels like medicine. It feels like you find a manifesto that speaks almost directly to you. And that's important to me that people feel less alone or less isolated or less politically isolated even. So this book is helping to sort of, you know, show you that there's others who've thought these things before and maybe even show you new visions that you've never even imagined for yourself before. Professor Foz, thank you so much for joining me today. Vive la revolution! And may you sell many, many copies. <laughs> thank you so much.